Welcome to Girls Talk Scuba. Now you're probably wondering who on earth we are. I'm Ellie. I'm Emmy. And this is the podcast where we talk all things scuba. Including, but not limited to, education. They don't know whether to do a buoyancy course Mm. or whether they actually want to just get some more fun dives under their belt. Equipment. We asked you what the first piece of equipment you bought was and the results are in. And destination. I really want to dive in the Caribbean and I really want to go diving with sharks. Make sure you subscribe to never miss an episode. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Girls Talk Scuba. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Emmy, welcome back. How was your week? Busy as always. (laughs) High season has not stopped yet. (laughs) Until we get to about September, we'll just be like busy. Our week was busy. busy. (laughs) Hectic. (laughs) Yeah. How's your week been? It's been good. I've been packing for a dive trip that I'm off on. Um, I'm off on a Girls Scuba press trip and Ooh. i'm really excited um and it's it's literally like a dream come true so i'm extremely thankful for the opportunity um but we thought today we might talk about packing for dive trips because i actually put something out on my instagram story the other day because i was struggling a little bit with i've never bought myself a dive bag with wheels travel bag like a yeah mm. dive travel bag and i have the kind of like satchel uh, dive bags but the the thing i get a bit um anxious of with those perhaps is is basically if i need to carry the bag myself if there's no trolleys available or you know when you land and you don't have the coin for the trolley that you oh, need the, so coin for the trolley so i was thinking oh it might be useful if i get myself one with wheels um so i actually put it on my story And the responses were quite interesting because people were suggesting a lot of different brands of dive bags, but also a couple of people actually said, you can just use a normal suitcase, which I know sounds obvious, but it's true. You can like, and it's, I do feel like some people have a point when they say you're kind of putting a target on your back with your dive equipment when you have like Scoop Pro or Aqualung or something like that, because you are saying this is dive equipment in here. Hi, I'm a diver. me. (laughs) Um, so I do actually really understand that and it's a very good point to make mm. so um, but we're going to cover all things dive packing today you know how to prepare for your dive trip if you're going on holiday you know what things you need to think about not just related to diving but insurance wise and everything like that too all right so where would you start with have you chosen a bag yes yeah, so I ended up I'm going to take my satchel like my, I don't know if that's what you call it satchel like a, um, a duffel bag okay I don't know where I'm getting satchel from <laughs> I'm sorry um, but I'm going to yeah go with the duffel bag now for me, my priority always with um, packing when I go and dive is just dive equipment. And I will take whatever clothes I can fit in there. But most of it will just be dive equipment. Do you take all of your gear? Yeah. Okay. I mean, apart from the tank and the weights, mm. but all of my... I am someone that just prefers to know what I'm diving with, have familiarity with it. Understandable. Um, so I do take all of my equipment, but I am also very particular in the way that I pack it. Mm-hmm. A bit OCD. I, <laughs> I, 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 right. Basically, let me let me talk you guys through it. Okay, here <laughs> get, we go. Get yourselves comfortable. <laughs> no, so I, um, I start off by putting my fins at the bottom. Okay. So I feel like that's a bit of a protective layer at yeah. the bottom. I then put my BCD on top of my fi- uh, of my fins. Um, my regulators go in my hand luggage. Always. Always. Don't because put it in the, lu- in the big luggage. They're, one, they're the most valuable thing out of all of my kit. And secondly, I feel like they're very easily damaged. So, so delicate. They go into my hand luggage. Um, and Although I have to say, and I'd like to hear your opinion on this, have you ever taken regulators through security before? No, I haven't. So I did it not too long ago, and the security guy at Malaga Airport was looked at me, and he was like, "What is this?" And I was like, "It's a regulator." I'm and, a scuba diver. <laughs> and he just gave me the weirdest look, and they were kind of putting it through all of those machines to check it, because um, it, it does look a bit odd if you don't know what it is. Mm. Um, but I did get some very strange looks from other people as well, like, "What, what is? What has she got?" Um, but yeah, they they always go in my um, in my hand luggage. Um, and then I go ahead and I put my suit, so my wetsuit, I roll it up and then I put it in like the end compartment of my bag. Mm. Um, and sometimes if I need to wrap anything fragile, like a dive torch or something, I'll wrap that inside of my wetsuit so it's got like a cushioning factor mm. or a compass or something like that. Um, and then I go ahead and put a spare mask because I put my main mask in my hand luggage as well in a little case. And then I go ahead and put my spare mask in a sock, just an old sock. Yeah, or your boot. You yeah, your boot. and then I put that inside my um, like cushiony bit. Mm. 
And then I go ahead and put my dive boots on the other side. So it's kind of like stiffs the bag out a little bit. And then um, after that, I um, kind of add the other things I need in there. So mm. if I'm taking like hoods or um, anything like that. Sounds about right. The only thing I would probably do different is I'd use this, the suit as the bottom cushion. That's what I would do mm. differently. And then you can use all the hood and the socks and the boots and it, even the fins as little compartments for things like yeah. torches and hoods and gloves and all your other little accessories, mm. carabiners. and Yeah. And then obviously in my hand luggage, I take, like if I'm taking a camera, then I put that in my hand luggage. I'm not risking anything. Uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, and then I start to kind of like pack my other things, so it's actually clothes, um, in, in my dive bag too. So I usually try and like fit them into the smallest gaps that they go, but it's, it's a great way to kind of dive save space. Dive is priority. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I will wear the same t-shirt, guys. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Um, but that's, that's kind of how particular I am about packing. Um, also like GSMB, make sure I've got that kind yeah. of in there too. Um, but I think also there's there's other things to think about before you go on a dive trip, not actually physically just packing the bag. My fear would be that it would get lost. So if I was to pack, and I would probably add a little tracker or an air tag. Yeah, air tags are really good to put just on them. Just in case. Like even though the insurance, because obviously get insurance, but even though the insurance would cover it if it got lost, mm. just to know where it is. Is help, yeah. It's a bit See more you chasing ease. down the road to someone. Like, yeah, that's my God. bag. <laughs> Um, but I do think as well that is a good point you make because dive insurance is super important to have and especially my dive insurance I'm with Dan I get my equipment covered as well on um, when I'm on dive trips or anything like that so that is really important but also it's looking at things like travel insurance because we have dive insurance your dive dive insurance might cover you for so I get like non-diving insurance as well on my plan so if I'm if I need medical help as well, but it's not related to diving, that's also included to a certain extent on my plan. That's good. Mm. That's good. And I I'm also this kind of person that will um, make sure I have all my policies ready before I go travelling, mm. um, because you know I just want to be able to go, like click onto my phone and be like there it is, or show them my folder. Yeah, I'm I'm a folder type of girl. <laughs> like what if my phone dies? My phone is unreliable. Yeah. Everything in a folder for me. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It's true though. Um, and then obviously just making sure other things. So before I go on a trip anywhere, I always make sure I like research where I'm going, the dive yes, center, of course. what kind of equipment they use. I ask loads of questions. And, and look at the reviews of the dive yeah. center. And I would also say, don't be afraid to um, like pest. I wouldn't say pester. That's not the right word, but speak to people like at the dive center. I ask about a zillion questions and I'm like, okay, so what kind of tanks do you use? Are they still aluminum? Like, and what liters are they are they 12 10s 15 18 mm-hmm. um, and then i'm like what's the water temperature like because then you know what to pack whereas yeah. you sometimes you can try and use google and it will be a, unclear a little bit so that's always a good thing to yeah, just definitely. proper dive in and find out from people definitely ask questions and get to know the dive sites that you go into because most dive centers will always have their little selection of dive sites mm. that they go to so you can always pre-research about yeah. the dive site and google some pictures and things like that and it gets you all excited as well well so. this is the stage i'm in at the moment i'm really i've been reading about all the history of the wrecks and everything oh, i'm um, so excited for it, you oh, thank you i'm so yeah, just i'm excited to jump in and kind of see what they're like and and everything like that but also to experience the history that goes with it because it was such a a massive thing um other things that we can do to prepare for our dive trips um i would just say before you would start packing make a list um, mm. I like a list. Love a good list. Take it all off as you go. Make sure you've got everything. Sun cream. Don't forget sun cream. Reef safe. Reef safe, obviously. <laughs> um, leaving conditioner. If you've got long hair like this mess, this mane. you want a lot of that in there. <laughs> yeah. And also things, you know, looking outside of diving, but dive computers, I mean, mine's on my wrist most of the mm. time, but dive computers, chargers, cameras, chargers, chargers, SD cards torch batteries yeah sd card so much double check the sd card double check the sd card always you get there and it's sd error what (laughs) and that's the that's the thing for me as well is because i like to make sure that um i charge everything and then it's already ready charged for when i when i'm there kind of doing a body check but for your suitcase instead literally (laughs) and then the other thing that i'm quite um passionate about is making sure that my suitcase is clearly marked 
Mm, because, because you know when it yours. gets to that bit at the end airport where you you have to collect your luggage and you're like oh no is this mine is it not mine it's just a waiting game <laughs> you're like oh no and then you try and look at the tag and you're like i don't want to steal someone else's bag someone comes running over that's <laughs> yeah. mine <laughs> but that is um something you can actually do quite easily so with like ribbons or mm. um i normally put like a little paddy um lanyard on mine as well so i can mm. see it's definitely mine i think with taken back to what you said at the start i would and i wouldn't want my bag to be like dive visible because mm. i would love it because then maybe other divers would come up to me and would have a chat about diving always love a good chat about diving but at the same time i'd be on edge because like there's a lot of money in this bag <laughs> take it and i'm like nah let's let's be discreet at yeah. the same time but mixed opinions i guess no it is difficult and i think is and that's why i always try and avoid having anything like my regulators or my camera or anything i mean don't get me wrong obviously like bcds are still valuable and and things like that but you know the dive insurance does cover it so if worst case scenario i yeah. did it did get lost or stolen then i at least Touch i know word. it's yeah i know can you imagine <laughs> at least i would know it'd be covered um but that i mean people do it differently i've seen a lot of people on the girls at scuba community saying they actually take their like fins in their hand luggage as well yeah i've seen some on their, rucksack. on their rucksacks as well and i mean if you don't want to bring all your gear like i personally probably wouldn't take all my gear i would take maybe my fins mask and reg that that would do me mm. fins just because i just love my apex mm. rk3s they're just my babies i love them and my mask because i know it fits it's small enough i can fit that anywhere i have to say so i i dive in the fourth element tech fins mm. um however i actually bought the scuba pro go i always forget the name go sport mm. um and they are the best fins for traveling they're the old blue ones you yeah have. they are so light they, they don't feel like yeah anything which is perfect for traveling as well because obviously mm. you don't want to take up the weight with your suitcase so yeah, especially if you've got jet fins they're quite heavy yeah so honestly if you're looking for a good pair of travel fins i would really recommend them um not sponsored at all or anything mm. like that but it is literally the, some of the best fins for traveling because they are just so light um and if especially if you're planning on doing it often and traveling often with dive equipment i would highly recommend that yeah there's also the cressy travel light bcd mm. that one i've seen at the shop at our dive shop it folds up so easily and it's so light this is like the you thing can basically roll it up but i love finding unique ways to kind of like fold things and make things fit better in my suitcase mm. it still comes to the point where at the airport you put it on the scales and you're like oh my goodness please fingers <laughs> crossed <laughs> yeah but i have 30 kilograms so i'm that should be plenty I think that, yeah that's plenty unless you're bringing your weights with you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which some people do some people take their own yeah. weight so yeah. we've had customers come from i think it's sweden once and he brought his eight kilos of weights with him i can un uh, there's part of me that actually understands that though because especially i dive with um half kilos in my trim pockets at the back so one half in each and i whenever i go traveling i'm not quite sure if people actually have half kilos some people mm. only have the kilos so i'm not sure what that is in pounds i'm sorry um but yeah so i can kind of understand that if you're if you're very particular about your weighting position and you you, you yeah. want exactly the weight you dive with then i understand completely and now now you've finished your trip you're repacking to come home mm. let that dry yeah let your gear dry or else you're gonna have a moldy smelly bag especially if you pee in your suit like we do <laughs> <laughs> no for sure it's it's and i mean this is like this week at the moment i'm avoiding using my equipment because i just want it to be nice and dry mm. before i go um, and also consider the fact that when your equipment is slightly wet it's going to be heavier so yeah. um you have to try and dry that out as much as you can really and definitely and the um, watch out for the hours in between you finished your last dive and the and time the flying, that you fly yeah. often when you do book a um you know dive holiday or a liverboard or anything like that obviously they take that into account in the itinerary mm -hmm. but yeah especially if you're planning your own dive trip then make sure your last dive is adequate according to the dan standards as well yeah but these are all things you have to think about isn't yeah, it it's, it's crazy it's really and also i'd say is always bring like spare batteries for like cameras and everything because they're very difficult to get hold of and torches and torches yeah <laughs> um but you want to make sure you've kind of got everything you need ready for it and lots of bikinis 
don't forget the bikinis <laughs> or else you'll be putting on your suit and awesome. the nerds. Yeah. <laughs> but this is this is comes down to my other point is I actually sacrifice a lot of clothes over, <laughs> over time. So I'm like, do I actually need a t shirt for every day? No, I do no. not. So the dive equipment takes You're gonna be in the water most of the time anyway. Yeah. So. And then obviously thinking about other things, it's just making sure you know where the dive center is that you're going to. Um, and, you know, I also, whenever I go on holiday somewhere and I'm going to a particular dive center, I will always reach out a couple of days beforehand. And if, especially if I'm taking my own equipment, I might say, do you mind if I come and drop my gear at the shop? Is it okay if I leave it at the shop? Where will it be stored? This is what I mean. I'm a nightmare. I ask about 50,000 questions. <laughs> no, but you want to know, is your gear, where is it going to hang? Is anyone going to touch yeah. it overnight? Let's, you know, they're questions that are allowed to be asked. Mm, for sure. Um, and that's kind of how I prepare myself. And then, you know, eventually when I get to the airport, I relax a little bit. A little bit. And make sure your bag's still there. <laughs> yeah, with the air tag, I'll be tracking it the whole way. <laughs> it's not on the plane. It's on a different one. <laughs> Um, I just remembered something we didn't actually mention though um, dive knives make sure obviously they are in your um, suitcase that goes into the yes. hold not onto not your, on your hand luggage you're not going to get through you're going to delay a lot of people <laughs> I don't think they're going to let that through <laughs> no definitely not I think I was reading a blog I think it was Girls at Scuba blog actually and they said um, dive knives in your big luggage mm -hmm. not your hand luggage or you will get stopped yeah for sure <laughs> Um, and other than that, just double check all of your policies before you go. I mean, we mentioned briefly earlier about travel insurance and dive insurance. Um, also, another thing that I would mention is depending on where you're going, whether you're going somewhere like mainland or whether you're perhaps going to more remote location. I always another question for your dive center that you're going to. But I always like to look at where the nearest chamber is. Definitely. Um, because actually there's quite a few places which don't have a chamber very yeah. close and you have to make a long trip and that's actually something I look at when I'm booking a holiday mm. rather than when I'm packing but it is something also to keep in mind um, obviously in the very unlikely event however it is good to have in your mind to know and also for your peace of mind yeah there was the, that lady that young lady that got shared in the girls at scuba group mm. not long ago and she had to travel quite far actually to just to get to a chamber which is quite scary if you think about mm. it quite mm. I yeah. think I think if there's a dive center on an island there should be a chamber at least like minimum an hour away mm. yeah it's, it's scary and I know the Maldives are, are actually getting quite good at this because they have quite a few but yeah just just double check where you're just so you have it in your mind and, and your log book don't forget your log book yes indeed write down their memories and get them stamps thank you very much for joining us again on girls talk scuba i would really like to ask the question to you guys what is your best packing hack mm. like packing tip slash hack and do you take all your gear or half your gear yeah definitely um, but thank you very much for joining us and we will be back with you very soon and do as always let us know leave a review and um, let us know if you would like us to talk about anything in the near future